Hello, Guide of Public School Families. I'm Mark Pellegrino, your superintendent, and I'm thrilled to be here to welcome you back to in-person learning at Gardner Public Schools. As your superintendent, I have a couple priorities. One of them is to make sure that your education continues and you don't miss a beat. Remote learning has been exceptional. I've been very proud of my teachers and staff in supporting you to make sure you're learning what you need to learn when you need to learn it. Now we're going to be going into a hybrid model where some students will be in person in classes and other students will be home streaming those lessons. We wanna make sure that this experience is as good if not better than your remote learning experience. So having you come back in the buildings is really important to us. We've been anxiously awaiting your return. These buildings have been empty and very lonely. The second thing I want to talk about is actually my first priority, which is safety. Now, safety is important. There's a virus which has caused a global pandemic. And some people are very afraid. Others don't have any fear at all. Now, when I think of this virus, I think of it like I do fire. A small campfire here might actually cause some people to be extremely afraid to go anywhere near the fire. Now that fear keeps them safe. Others feel very comfortable around the fire and are able to go right up to the fire, stoke the fire, put wood on the fire to keep the fire going. While that's wonderful, those different levels of fear are important to understand because the fear isn't important, but what is important is that we respect the fire that we don't take a piece of wood out and wave it around, that we don't pour gasoline on a fire. There are certain rules that we all know that we have to abide by to keep ourselves safe. That respect is extremely important. This virus is much the same thing. With, with the virus, you have to have a healthy level of respect for this virus. And that respect comes in the form of different things and we act a little differently in our schools. So this video is all about your return to school and your return to school safely. So I hope families get a lot out of this and watch this video so you can come back to our schools safely. Thank you. Hi, I'm Becky McCaffrey, the school nurse senior for Gardner Public Schools. I want to tell you about some of the health initiatives we have in place to keep people healthy during this time. We have developed a daily screening protocol that we would like everybody to monitor symptoms before you come to school. So if your child is sick at all with any COVID symptoms, we'd like them to stay home. If they do come to school and they're sick, we have a medical waiting room that they will be going to. And we just wanna stress the importance of being able to pick up your child if they're sick, because at the end of the day, if they do have symptoms, we won't be able to send them home on a bus. We have face mask protocol available that we will utilize that all students, regardless of age, will be required to wear a face mask. If you have a child that has a medical condition that um, inhibits them from wearing a face mask, please talk to the school nurse so that we can just talk to you about it and there's a possibility that they would be exempt from that. Um, we have alcohol-based hand sanitizer that we're using frequently throughout the day so that when we can't wash our hands with soap and water, we want to make sure that we're using that in the classroom as frequently as we need to. So again, if you don't want your child using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, please just write us a note so that we know, and then we'll make other available times for them to hand wash with soap and water. Um, as with anything, this situation is fluid and we're constantly changing things as we need to based on guidance. All our protocols are available on the Gardner K-12 website. We're really excited to have students back in the building. Please call us if you have any questions or concerns. Hi again. Now we want to talk about bus safety. Some of you, your first interaction with Gardner Public Schools will be again getting on the bus. But again, we're learning all new ways to do everything we do here at Gardner Public Schools. So the first thing is, while you're at the bus stop, you should be waiting. If you're alone, you should be waiting without a mask on. If there's other people around you, this is where you should wear a mask. So let me put my mask on. When the bus arrives, it's important that you have your mask on before you step onto the bus. So here's how you'd step onto the bus.
The bus looks as it normally does. However, you see all these different red dots on the bus. Now, except for kindergarten, which may have a slightly different procedure where they're sitting up in the front, all students, as you enter the bus, go all the way to the back of the bus, as far back as you can. This way, you're not passing people sharing your breath. So if I was the first one on the bus, which I am, I'd walk all the way to the back of the bus. And you can sit on the right side or the left side, whichever you choose. The next person, so if I sat here, notice there's a red dot and it's to the side. So this red dot is all the way over to your right on the seat. That means this person would sit in front of that red dot. The person in the next, so when this seat's filled and this seat, the next row, you'll notice the red dot is on the window side instead of the aisle side. That's important to note because we want to have as much distance between each student as we can. Another important note, these windows are closed right now because no one's on the bus. However, every day, the windows will be open, even in colder weather. They don't need to be open the whole way. We just need to get some air into, onto the bus. And it might not be every window, but some windows will be open, at least to a certain extent. That allows more air into the bus, which dilutes the air. It keeps you safer. So I want to make sure that when you're getting on the bus, in colder weather, don't wear a t-shirt and shorts. Make sure you're dressed appropriately for the weather. Keep yourself safe. Thank you. Hello again. I wanted to mention another key safety feature here at Barnum Public Schools, our ventilation system. Most rooms are equipped with a univent system, which pulls in fresh air from the outside, bringing it to the, into the classroom, keeping you safer, according to the CDC and the Department of Public Health. Both recognize that bringing fresh air into the classroom dilutes the air and helps protect against transfer of the virus. Back here, we have an exhaust that pulls air out of the room. So the air is constantly circulating throughout the room. Now you may ask, some rooms are equipped with a univest. What happens in the other rooms? Let's go check it out. So here we are in a smaller classroom that does not have a univent system. Instead, the district purchased HEPA filters for each one of these spaces, counseling rooms, speech language pathologist offices, guidance offices, all of those places have HEPA filters. Again, Gardner Public Schools, keeping you safe. Hello, Gardner High School students and families. It's Mrs. Bolger, your very proud principal. And we are doing this video today to welcome students back into the building and to give you an idea of what your day is going to look like. Um, something that'll be a little different this year is that buses in the morning will be dropping off behind the building and you're gonna be coming in the D entrance. You'll see these signs as you are walking into the building um, and then you'll have directions as you're going in. And of course, administration will be out greeting everybody and directing people with where they need to go. If you are a student driver, you're still parking in the student parking lot and you are coming in the front of the building. If you are being dropped off by parents or guardians, you will also be dropped off in the front of the building, which is not typically what we do, but you'll be able to drive right in the main circle and be dropped off there and come in the front entrance. Buses in the back in the morning, drivers and drop-offs in the front of the building. So coming into the building, You'll be entering the D entrance if you're getting off the bus. In all of our entrances, you will see signs talking about social distancing and how to keep us safe. And we will be asking all students entering the building to sanitize their hands. And they are sanitizing stations at all of the entrances. Something you'll also notice is we have two stairwells that we have designated for up two stairwells that we have designated for down. They're well marked. You will see signs at the bottom and on the landings and at the top of the stairwells saying whether that's a stairwell that goes up or down. So when you come into the entrance, you will either 
go down the hall towards your A-wing classes, or you will go up the stairs to the second or the third floor, depending on your classes and where you are going. So I'm going to work our way upstairs to a classroom. So you will see on the landings, again, reminders of whether stairwells go up or down. You will also see throughout the building, very important, orange arrows on the floor. These arrows are pointing you in the direction that you need to walk. All students on the floors will be walking in a circle in the same direction. Yes, that will make it a little bit longer going to some of your destinations, but we all have to follow the arrows on the floor. They're very well marked. Think about the Boston Aquarium and the fish in the middle of the tank going in the same direction. That's going to be Gardner High School. Again, you will see as you're coming up stairwells, you'll see the orange arrows very clearly marked on the floor. Remember when you are in the hallways, you still want to be socially distanced from folks as best you can. Try to maintain that six feet distance. Remember you're going to have your masks on all day. We're going to talk about mask breaks in a moment. We're going to go into a classroom and give you an idea of what the inside of a classroom is going to look like. So here we have Ms. Davis's classroom. And as you walk in, you will see that the seating is separated minimally six feet apart. Some classrooms will have more desks in them, and you will be sitting every other desk. So they're set up a little bit differently, but you can see how everything is socially distanced. Um, in every classroom, you'll also see hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, extra masks if, student need, if students need masks. Something else you will see in every room is a QR code. We have gone paperless for passes at Gardner High School. Students will literally scan with their phone or their Chromebook the QR code in each room. You will type where you're going and you will be off. You can use it to go to the bathroom, go to the nurse, so there will be no more exchanging of paper passes. Um, so we're very excited to get that system up and running. Um, and you will see those in every room outside of guidance and so forth. Um, something else to talk about real quick is mask breaks. There will be, um, if the room allows for it, mask breaks individual will be allowed by open windows in the classroom if there's space. Every room on the outside has a little sign that talks about where they can have a mask break. So there's a space outside of every classroom in the hall, socially distanced, far apart between rooms, where students will be able to get mask breaks in the hallway. So there's options in the classroom, in the hallway, and there's always the option of a teacher taking a class together outside for a mask break. So we will work plenty of mask breaks into the day. So, Another thing that I want to discuss is going to, when you go to the bathroom, how that's going to work. Um, obviously, you will scan your QR code, and we have um, a system in place for the bathrooms when you get there. We're going to try to limit it to one person at a time. Could be two people. There is the bathrooms are big, and they're safe enough apart. Um, and there's ample space in the bathrooms. You will find there's a bathroom open on every floor, like we do all the time. There will be staff sitting outside the bathrooms. You will also see on the floor some black marks, some tape marks that we have six feet distance apart. So if you come and there's a line, you will be waiting on one of the designated spots. When the bathroom opens, you'll be able to go in. And again, a staff member will be here directing it. Girls room, wait line is over there. Boys room, wait line is over here. And again, teachers will be helping you, help direct you for that. Um, again, when classes are dismissed, you'll be dismissed from class one row at a time, socially distant, you'll come into the hall. And like the young adults that you are, you will transition from one class to the other, staying socially distanced. 
You'll go into the room, you'll have an assigned seat, you'll go to your seat, and you'll be the great students that you are, and class will be conducted um, as it typically is. The difference will be while you're in class, your teacher will also be paying attention to their computer screen as some of your classmates, the same kids that you have in your classes right now, will be at home um, doing their work from home. And from here, I want to bring you downstairs to show you um, the main office and some things that look a little bit different as well. Something else I want to show you is our nurse's office, which again, most of you are familiar with. So we've got the nurse, nurse's office space, which again has been set up socially distanced in here with our awesome nurses who work really, really hard for us every day. Something that is different this year is we have a um, medically separate waiting room for students who might not feel well during the day in an effort to keep people separated from each other and safe. And that room is attached right here to the nurse's office space. And you will see it is its own separate space, very socially distanced, um, with chairs, a bed. So if students are not feeling well, a nurse will be in here, a nurse will be out there waiting with you while your parents and guardians are notified to come pick you up. So that is something that's a little different that we're, we're doing this year. Um, I also would like to um, show you the main office. And you will notice that we have plexiglass divider, which is new um, to keep our office staff safe and our community safe as they're coming in and out of the building. So that's something that looks a little bit different. As we exit the building, something that'll be also a little bit different this year is we're gonna do a staggered dismissal so that everybody's not flowing out of the building at the same time, just to keep everybody socially distanced. So we'll do it over the announcements. We will announce student drivers separately, students who get picked up separately. Um, some buses will pick up in the back of the building. Some will pick up in the front of the building. We will do those announcements so that everybody's going out at different times. And as you're leaving the building, whether it's here at the front entrance or the D entrance again, you will have the option for a grab and go lunch. So you will literally, tables will be set up. If you want to grab lunch, you will grab your lunch and take it with you as you walk out the door. Also included in that bag is the next morning's breakfast. So there will be a lunch and a breakfast in every bag as you leave the building. And that'll be open for everybody. So again, if you're a pickup, you'll be dismissed in the front, some of the buses and some of the buses in the back of the building. But we will guide you that. So I hope that this gave you the opportunity to just get a little bit of a feel for how the day is going to work here. We will be here all along the way to guide you, to support you, to help you, and we are thrilled that we're going to have some more students back in the building. So I'm anxious to see everybody and I wish you well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative and a little bit fun. Um, hopefully you know now all that we've done to make sure that we're ready to receive students on October 26th. Thanks for joining us. And as always, we are all Wildcats, and all Wildcats are in this together. Thank you and be safe.